Ah yes, wars. They showed great power, strength, and a nation's superiority over its foes during the pre-World War I era. Throughout human history though, war was seen as the ultimate sacrifice, as in the times of the Romans or the Japanese Empire, where surrendering was a sign of weakness. That was such an awful act to do, that it was better to go watch One Piece than to surrender. Two countries who we often think of when it comes to wars are France and the United Kingdom, who are about to change North American history forever. And by forever, I mean that this history will never be taught in the classrooms as it would make them look way too bad for their country's agenda. Also, the UK won't properly be created for another 122 years in 1707, but I'm lazy and I don't want to rewrite this video, so get over it. Hey, pas encore formé, why are you going to be busy setting? Je sais de coloniser Amérique de Mal. What? Tu n'as pas entendu qu'il y a une toute nouvelle continent qui vient d'être découvert. C'est logique avec ton l'anglais qui pou. Tu ne fais rien d'autre de dormir tout la journée et coloniser l'Irlande. And so the British, seeing the rest of the European powers hard at work, pillaging empires in Central America, killing off indigenous peoples, bringing over hundreds of thousands of slaves from Africa, and spreading disease everywhere they went, got super jealous and threw a temper tantrum. And then upon realizing how stupid that was, grabbed the nearest guns, hopped into a boat, and made a quick pit stop in Sierra Leone to pick up some labor, and then went Mach 1 into North America, into Newfoundland, and Roanoke. Which both went down as hard as Justin Trudeau's approval ratings, and then went back to Queen Elizabeth I, and was like, <coughs> Oi! Right and honorable majesty of the kingdoms of England and Ireland, the last monarch of the House of Tudor, and the lady who thought it would be funny to not have kids, the only surviving daughter of the King Henry VIII, the former King of England, and Queen Anne, who doesn't have matter because she's a woman, and something about blah 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 blah, supreme governor of the Cornerstone General of the Church, and something subscribe to this YouTube channel, your right and honorable Queen Majesty of Queen of the English and the Irish, good Queen Bliss, Elizabeth I. The explorers that we sent are all gone. Then the British sent a few more boats over to North America, and a few attempts later created the first successful British settlement in North America. The settlements of Jamestown in 1607 and followed by Plymouth Rock in the November of 1620. Fun fact, it is often associated with the North-South divide today in the United States, with rednecks in the North and woke TikTok influencers in the South. While Jamestown was often made up of wannabe generals, criminals, and slave owners. Slowly over time though, more and more people, mainly conflicts and Irish people, poured into the new colonies and they began to grow, which led them into conflicts with the locals. Hey bro, all we're asking is that you trade with us and then get off our land like you promised in this treaty. Hey, do you understand what he's saying? No, 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 I don't. No, no. How could I say that? No, no. Dude, I speak English. Hey, hey, did you guys see the game last night? No, 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 we didn't. Who did? I don't know. No, no. Talk to me. Put you so la ferme. Oh, now you switched to French. Oh, sorry, I did not see you there. How rude of me. So, you want some of our fine sheep and pigs with a large dose of smallpox or whatnot? What? Yes, like we'll just give them away, infected for you. But, but we'll get sick. We basically lack all immunity to old world diseases, and then we, because we're never exposed to them, and well, we could all die. Too bad. Your whole village and between 10 and 100 million indigenous peoples are dead in the new world due to our old world diseases. Also, our king kind of was told by God himself to lead our kingdom, and the king wants to do this, so yeah. But look, in the time that I was writing that stupid skit, the Dutch just kicked Sweden out of their colony along the Delaware River, which was then dunked on by the British, when they wiped the Dutch's so hard that it left a red mark on their flag. <laughs> the British then proceeded to expand their colonial empire in North America by creating new colonies like New York and New Jersey, who are obviously the friendliest of allies. No! Bad New Jersey! Bad state! Go to your room! The British also expanded some of their pre-existing colonies until they reached... <laughs> the French colony of New France started in 1524 when this guy named Giovanni Verrazzano sailed up the eastern coast of North America from Florida to Newfoundland, discovering a bunch of land, mapping out the local areas, and just generally being a huge nerd. This was then followed by French explorer Jacques Cartier, which almost has the French word for the word map in his last name, almost guaranteeing that he would be an explorer. During the span of three voyages and a bucket of money sunk later, he laid claim to the Gaspésie Peninsula for King Francis I of France. The next year, he traveled up the St. Lawrence River and took a quick 
break in Stadagana before ending his voyage in Hoshalaga. During his voyages, though, a ton of 25 people died from scurvy, which is caused from a dietary deficiency of vitamin C. Vous pensez qu'il est bien? Oui, il est probablement en bonne santé. This made those who got scurvy end up quite dead due to a lack of medical knowledge and made Cartier run across the Atlantic all the way back to Europe like a little child. But only after a little more exploring. Cartier was then followed in 1608 when King Henry IV of France, not England, sent Samuel de Champlain, a wannabe Cartier, average rat for the French monarch, well in the Caribbean, and a hardcore capitalist. So communist, you better look away. Pierre Dugolat de Mons and 28 other men to map out the area and establish the city of Quebec. So, Samuel, I know that you watch these videos and that we are mentioning a very famous explorer with the same name as you, who everyone said in history class looks like you, despite the fact that it's not a real photo of him and it is just what an artist thought he looked like. De Champlain went over to New France and founded the city of Quebec on the site of Stadacana, along with a few other cities, notably the greatest city in the whole world, Trois-Rivières, with its three rivers that aren't actually three rivers, but two that converge at three islands in the middle of them. But in the end, Champlain made New France a proper colony of France, building up resources, infrastructure, and just being a generally great guy for everyone, unless you hated capitalism. In fact, even indigenous people love him. You don't see that often very much with colonizers who took over your land. Although I was kind of lazy and got that information off of a Wikipedia article, which was recently vandalized. So it's probably trustworthy. Champlain is often called the father of New France, firmly fermenting him as one of the founders of modern day North American society. But most of the colonies in North America, however, were fur colonies, which were colonies whose primary purpose was to export fur products back to Europe. This was an extremely lucrative and complex process that really needs its own video. But in summary, it revolved around getting a hunter to find their local beaver, jump up behind it and shove a gun up its then take it to a worker who would make a nice hat out of it. Then they would send it onto a boat, into a store, and then a man would buy it and place it on his fat, bald head. The indigenous peoples became a very important tool to the French and the British as they sold their beaver skins, which they hunted for profit to the Europeans. However, as New France expanded, they started to run into some conflicts with the locals just like the British, but a few small skirmishes and treaties which were actually respected unlike the British later, and New France had a complex system of allies and enemies. And when I say complex system, I more so mean everyone is allied with the French, except for one massive exception. The Iroquois Confederacy. The French f***ing hated the Iroquois Confederacy, and the Iroquois Confederacy f***ing hated the French. To the French, the fact that the Iroquois were backed and allied to the British made them spit out their wine and cheese in sheer disgust. And to the Iroquois, the fact that the French were backing the Huron Wandat and the Algonquin tribes made them spit out their corn and the whole country of Turkey in sheer hate. And worse yet, they bordered each other. The Iroquois began a campaign of expansion for access to beavers to meet the heightened demand from the times of the Dutch. All this crazy beaver hunting decided to deplete the natural resources of the land, which led to France becoming very fed up with the Iroquois. And so the French started to build fortifications along their borders and led to constant off and on wars between the two, often called the Beaver Wars or the Iroquois Wars. This conflict finally ended in July of 1701 in the Treaty of Montréal, which forced the Iroquois Confederacy to become Switzerland. After some New York businessmen encouraged them to attack El Le Chien, which they did, terrorizing the local Montréalers so much that they stopped having car accidents for five minutes in sheer shock. The Iroquois attacked Le Chien in 1689 in the Le Chien Raid. However, with the aid of the troops de la Marine, the defenders eventually forced the Haudenosaunee to make peace. In a treaty ratified in the July of 1701 at Montréal, they agreed to remain neutral in wars between the British and the French. But finally, in 1745, the French cracked when they went to their front door and slapped them in the face. They marched on the Iroquois land and destroyed the village of Saratoga, which killed up to 100 inhabitants. And the British were not gonna take it anymore. Et c'est à moi, et c'est à moi, et c'est à moi, et c'est à moi. Et c'est le mien. No, don't do it. Et voici le mien. You know what? you. And then the French built a ton of forts on disputed territory in the Mississippi and Vermont. Maintenant que nous avons ces forts. Qu'allez-vous faire? Well, we're gonna fuck up Acadia. Mais non, vous ne le faire pas. Non, fais pas ça. And so the United Kingdom went and fucked up Acadia, starting Queen Anne's 
Great War, which ended with the British capturing the key French fort and capital city of Acadia, Port Royal. This infuriated the French, who retaliated by getting their ass whooped even harder by the 1713 Treaty of Utrecht, which ceded the territories of Hudson's Bay, Newfoundland, and parts of Acadia. In a string of unfortunate events, this shit hit the fan for the French, when in 1744 they went back to war in the War of Austrian Secession, often called King George's War, which is the North American theater of said war. The French led two campaigns into New England, but solidly ended with a British victory when a group of New Englanders captured the city and fort of Louisbourg on the 15th of June 1745. Later though, France and the UK thought it would be a bit funny to do a bit of trolling when they signed the Peace of Aix-la-Chapelle in 1748, which ended the War of Austrian Secession, which basically hit the load previous save file button and ceded Louisbourg back to the French. A massive W for the French in North America, but left a lot of French peoples pissed off as they made huge territorial gains in other theaters of the war, notably their raid on the crypto miners. Finally though, New France had reached the climax of its legacy. This would determine the very survival of the colony, the culture, the language, what you do for work on Mondays, or that you would forever be mad at Apple for not using USB-C chargers. This was the final battle, the final foe, and they weren't going down without a fight. The Seven Years' War started in 1756 and was the first true global war and was fought on all but one continent poor old Antarctica. The war truly pinned France and the UK's backs against the wall, both with no other option besides calling off the war that left hundreds of thousands to die or to fight to the death. There would only be one wiener in this fight and the other would lose everything. And as you may have guessed by now by the way I'm talking, it was obviously the Bra- it was the French. They lost. The French took defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat. They lost at Lake George. They lost at Louisbourg. They lost at Guadeloupe and Fort Niagara. Obviously, I'm over exaggerating this and they won 50% of the time, but I have to keep on making fun of the French because. Actually, why am I making fun of the French? But then the war reached the final battle, the final boss fight. This was about to determine if the French were going to win or die. On the 27th of June, 1759, British officer James Wolfe lands on Ile d'Arlines with his army of nearly 8,000 men, and by July occupies the French encampments at Montgomery Falls and the position at Point Levis, which was right across the St. Lawrence River from Quebec City, and was seen as a massive FU to the French. Then on the 31st of July, the British went back on the attack, attacking the French positions at Beaupar, but after a harsh battle, they were forced to retreat. Then the British cut off the city's supply lines to force them to the battlefield. But French General Montclair had over one million IQ and would not come out to fight, as he knew that they had a better position. The British then established a position upstream and decided to launch an invasion of Quebec. The British landed in Alliés de Fonne and f scaled a 53 meter high cliff to get past the French defenses. When French General Montclair had heard that Wolfe had landed, he grabbed his men and drove his new Lamborghini to the battlefield as fast as possible, as he knew he had to drop some sick bars and wolf before the fight. On the 13th of September 1759, six indigenous tribes and nearly 30,000 British and French troops were lined across the Plains of Abraham. Then the first shots hit. The French sent lines of indigenous marksmen to flank the sides of Wolf's lines. While Clem advanced his forces and started firing 120 meters away from the British front lines. But then someone landed the shot. Some say it was a Frenchman, others say Dude Perfect was there that day, but someone landed three fatal 360-degree no-scope trick shots on James Wolfe. He died that day. His final words, which source I made the fuck up, were, Montclair's roast were too personal. Now, this is personal. His gut full of lead boys. But what he actually said was something stupid about being at peace or whatever, which is kind of funny coming out of a guy who killed people for a living. But soon the British regained strength when Brigadier General George Townshed assumed command, stopping the French release force and giving up the high ground. This let the French retreat to a better position, which in the rush left Montclair wounded and dead the next morning. His final words were, So much the better, I won't see the British in Quebec. 
which was quite ironic. As After he died, the British took control over the city, which was then laid to siege by a counteroffensive French force. But with no reinforcements to New France, La Ville de Quebec capitulated, causing the city of Montréal to fall in a domino effect. This gave no other option to King Louis XVIII of France but to officially hand over New France to the British in the Treaty of Paris 1763, which officially ended the Seven Years' War. And for the last part, I asked ChatGPT to write an outro for me because I was getting a bit lazy of script writing after recording for over three hours. New France was a French colonial adventure in North America that began in the early 15th century and ended in the mid 18th century to outcompete the British. It was marked by a focus on the fur trade, warfare, and the establishment of a French presence in the New World. Despite its initial success, New France ultimately fell to the British forces in 1763, leading to the end of French colonial rule in the region. This colonial history left a lasting impact on the culture and language of much of North America, with French heritage continuing to shape the regions to this day, and left the British the only major power left in